So let me at the outset thank Matty and the members of the executive committee who selected me along with my friend Dev Kumar Bhai to be the winner of the 2014 Talbot Winchell Award. You are very much delighted to be here third time and the Princeton Club, under the auspices of the Institute of General Semantics, to be a part of this great celebration, annual celebration. And I think this is not going to be the last one. We had our second coming, we had our third coming, and I hope that next year it will have our fourth coming. <laughs> First we came here in 2008. Then we came in 2011. Now it is 2014. Dev Kumar Bhai told us about dating and indexing. Dating is important. That's why I mentioned these dates. 2008, when you came here, the Institute of General Semantics, the Balban Parak Center for General Semantics was not founded. That was founded next year in 2009 in Baroda, India. That was a precursor moment, we can say. That was the beginning of the conceptualizing the center of general semantics in India. And we came, we met all of you, many of you, still continue to be friends. And that was the inspiration which gave us the idea to found a center in the name of a great person named Balban Parekh. Then we came in 2011, Balban Parekh was still alive and center was only two years old. So that was the middle point, the beginning, middle, and perhaps the third point, which is not the ending, I'm not saying that it's the ending, I don't believe in ending. There's always a continuous process, life is continuous, there's no ending. And this is the 2014 when Balban Parikh is no more. The center was founded by Balban Parikh. Balban Parikh was more or, like, more or less like Alfred Korzybiski. It's miniature scale, of course. He didn't have that kind of profundity of Alfred Korzybiski, but he had a vision. Like Alfred Korzybiski, he had a vision. And for 25 years after studying general semantics, when I met him accidentally in Mumbai, Mumbai, for some other occasion, I was charmed by his personality, and he also liked me. And since then, we have been cemented together to some extent. Even if he's no more, he died in 2013, we still continue to be under the impact of that great person, Balban Parekh. We came here in 2011 to collect the prize on his behalf. He was the recipient of the 2000, 2011 when Talbot wins a lower. Since he could not come, he had demoted both of us to come here. And he wrote a note which I read out. Now we are on our own. And I don't think we deserve, I certainly do not think that I deserve to get this hour, frankly speaking. We are just the beginners, we are learning. And we are trying to do something you know, of general semantics in India and uh, we have not yet succeeded. This is the beginning or you can say beginnings, if you use a plural thing, it's beginnings of our activity. And uh, we hope that general semantics will grow in India. It's beginning to grow. We are at the beginning stage. But we are not doing general semantics alone. We are doing something else also. We are doing other human sciences. That's why it is not called 
Institute of General Semantics, Center for General Semantics, what's called the Center for General Semantics and other human sciences. I insisted at the beginning that let us not call the center, the Center for General Semantics, that is too limiting. We have to open it out to other human sciences. It, because in India, general semantics will not grow unless it is allied to other disciplines. I teach literature. And when we read Korzybiski, we have a different way of looking at Korzybiski from a literary point of view. So Korzybiski is like, you know, it's, it's the nucleus, we can say, for us. And it moves in many directions. When you read Korzybiski, you move in many directions. If you limit it to one perspective, a singular perspective, you can do, you cannot do general semantics. That is not in the nature of general semantics. The more and more you read science and sanity, the more you think the discipline is complex. It's not something that is limited. You can't just go to the roots of general semantics. This is what general semantics is about. From our perspective in India, which is different from your perspective in the United States, general semantics has to be understood in a larger context, larger disciplinary context, that we don't deal with general semantics per se as one unique discipline. It has to be understood in the context of other disciplines. So our center has been trying over these years since its founding in 19, 2009 to branch out in many other areas using general semantics as the point of departure. That is what Lance, when he came to talk about general semantics, he actually, we are to some extent linked with the Institute of General Semantics, visibly and invisibly. And I say that the invisible connection perhaps is more everlasting than the visible connections. People meet with each other in the conferences, you exchange uh, pleasantries and you forget. Even the faces also become blurred over the years. But the invisible links are greater links. Who knew 20 years ago or 15 years ago that there will be an Institute of General Semantics in Baroda? But General Semantics Institute in Baroda cannot be one institute without its support from the other institute which I am also <coughs> directing, that is the Center for Contemporary Theory. So there is a kind of relationship between the Center for, Relation, Center for Contemporary Theory and the Institute of General Semantics, because we all do theory and praxis together. And if you do not have that kind of cross connection with the other disciplines surrounding, uh, surrounding space, the circumambient space around, you cannot build an institution. That is why the linkages are quite invisible linkages. And it is our modest attempt to discover those linkages. Linkages among human beings, linkages among the disciplines, linkages among the topics that you study, and the connections we establish. Interesting things that happen when you walk, for example, when Frederick Nietzsche was walking from one mountain to another mountain, he could see the undulating landscape, and it occurred to him that here is the idea of the eternal recurrence. One mountain goes, comes down, the another mountain rises, and so on and so forth. The idea of the eternal recurrence came from the walking. So these are the kinds of connections that you people establish. So by coming over and over again to the institute, we are not able to come every year because of financial reasons. It is very costly to be in New York. But New York is a charming place for me. I grew up in New York in the 60s during the unrest of the 60s, the tumultuous years, 1969 to 70, I was in New York area. <coughs> Wonderful to be in New York. And it literally, when I left in 1973, I posted my letter to a friend of mine from the post box in front of the New York Public Library in 42nd Street. And I literally cried when I left New York. I was a part of the New York scene in the late, 70, late 60s and the early 70s. I do come back from time to time, but New York has changed. It is not that robust New York anymore. Harlem has become a European city. Things have changed. And you see the bigger houses, bigger buildings, 
different kinds of human beings. But that strength, that robustness, that liminality of New York in 1960s and early 70s is gone, perhaps gone forever. But once it has been a part of your consciousness, it will never go away. The invisible imprint that remains in your memory remains for long, remains for all time. That's why I keep coming back to New York. Even if I am not in New York, New York is a part of my imaginary. It's always there. I always feel at home when I step on in New York, in JFK Airport, or in Liberty International Airport, I feel I'm at home. This is the spirit of general semantics. You are at home, even you are away from home. And that's why I'm delighted. Last time I came with my wife, and he took her around to the city, walked in the 42nd uh, Street, went to Central Park, sat for some time, and came back and reminisced her about my days in New York. I was not married then. No. And it was nice to be in New York when you are not married. <laughs> if you are young and in the 60s, it was nice to be in New York. And it was a wonderful experience to reminisce. Man lives by reminiscences, by nostalgia, by memory. Remembrance, you are talking of time binding. That is the spirit of time binding. We came here and to establish those links and strengthen those links. The links that we have established with the Institute of General Semantics will remain, I think, forever. I'm not sure. But as long as, long as we are there, as long as our center is there, that will happen, that will continue. And like AKML Memorial Lecture, we have instituted three years ago Balban Parekh Memorial Lecture. Every year, you invite a distinguished visitor, scholar. This year, in February in 2015, Professor Tom Mitchell, great art historian and literary scholar from University of Chicago, he will be the third, giving the third Balban Parekh Memorial Lecture. And like you have a symposium attached to the lecture program, we also have a lecture, a symposium program. So we do all kinds of things like this. And uh, as you could see, there is some correlationship between what you have been doing here and what we have been doing there. The only difference is that we are doing more than what you have been doing. We do more than seven, eight programs a year spread across the country. That is why you are visible all over the country because of the programs are spread all over. Thank you once again for inviting us to be here, and we're delighted to be here.